Hello, dear students. Very good morning. In today's class, we're going to continue our topic that is chapter number six, contemporary South Asia. So far, what we have discussed in the chapter, let us recap. So far, we have discussed that first of all, what we mean by South Asia, which are the seven countries which we include in South Asia. Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. So in this chapter, we are going to discuss about these countries, you know, about the South Asia. And uh, in the previous class, we just went through that in South Asia, uh, much of the countries, even the people of the South Asia, they largely support democratic form of government, democracy. So democracy has its root in, the, in this region. Then further we discussed about uh, and we started the topic, the military and democracy in Pakistan. Uh, being a very important country in the South Asian region, in Pakistan, however, Pakistan and India both at the same time they got independence. Pakistan and India like after partition Pakistan was made. But in India, the democracy has been, has been successful, but in Pakistan, it is not the case. In Pakistan, there was dictatorship time and again. So that's what we started in the last class. Today, we will continue this topic and we will move further to the next topic. So in the last class, we were discussing about the Pakistan that uh, in Pakistan, time and again, military rulers came. Uh, first time when General Ayub Khan, through election, he just got himself elected. Later on, General Yaya Khan, who just uh, took over from Ayub Khan and took the reign in his hand. Later on, General Jia Ulhak, then, uh, then General Parviz Musarraf. So that's how time and again Pakistan was dominated by army. Here another cartoon is also given to you. A cartoon bhi aapko pe diya wa hai, and this cartoon is representing Parviz Musarraf. Now in 1999 when Kar Kargil war happened at the time uh, Nawaz Sharif was the Prime Minister of Pakistan who belongs to PML uh, Pakistan Muslim League N. PML N. Pakistan Muslim League Noon bolte usko wahan pe, so this cartoon is representing that uh, like uh, General Parviz Musarraf eh, as the military ruler or as a kind of leader. Eh, na? So here in, in this picture, we, we are just understanding that, that every time the military leader or military ruler, like they have the much dominance. Eh, na? Being given, if you want democratic koi military ruler, if you want a leader ban gaya hai, this is General Ayub Khan, but they also had to take over from one way to another way. General Yaya Khan took over from one way to another way. So, he had to keep his command on the military, but he had to keep his establishment with the establishment of the democratic setup. So, this cartoon is showing you that uh, dual kind of uh, policies or dual kind of system in Pakistan, where the main power lies in the hands of the army. So, that is the establishment there. Now we have been going through the last uh, paragraph of uh, this topic in our last class. So the army strain power is therefore justified that uh, because in Pakistan, Pakistan's uh, main security purpose, it is like uh, they always show to the people of the Pakistan that uh, India is a threat for them, no? for their existence, India is a threat. So they always, what they do? They show that threat to the uh, to the people of Pakistan, and through that they try to project the Pakistani military as a kind of a protector, जो उनको बचाएगी है ना? So इस तरीके से ये जो policy adopt करते हैं, तो वो अपना domination, अपनी establishment को एक तरीके से क्या करते हैं? They try to like uh, seal their domination and establishment uh, की जो जो उसकी principality है, कि लोग भी इस चीज को accept करें that we are here to protect and India is a kind of threat है ना? So the army's stay has been, that's how justified. So army's stay, army's control, which is government, is justified in this And uh, many people say that in democracy, like self-minded, selfish people, selfish uh, politicians are there, selfish-minded parties. Uh, so that's how in the chaotic democracy, it is not uh, like, it will be very disastrous for Pakistan. So there must be a kind of control of the military army, whether in power, or even outside of the democratic setup. Currently, Imran Khan is the Prime Minister of Pakistan, but throughout the world it is known that the real power is in the hands of the Pakistani establishment, and which is the establishment? That is the army, the Pakistani army. Now next, 
while democracy has been has not been fully successful in pakistan democracy pakistan mein fully successful nahi hui hai lekin fir bhi kuch wahan pe positive cheeze bhi hain jaise kya bata rahe dekho aapko it has not been fully successful in pakistan there has been a strong pro democracy sentiment in the country country ke andar pro democracy setup sentiments zarur hain pakistan has a courageous and relatively free press and a strong human rights movement so in pakistan the, the role of the press the, the news channels or whether the print media or digital media na, the role of the press is also very important and it has been throughout the history it has been very courageous na, very like bahut acche acche wahan pe journalists jo real realistic realistic rehte hue like many times they also criticize the establishment it is very dangerous for them also but so this is these are some uh, like good signs also now the lack of genuine international support ab is ye dekho question aap se ban sakta hai ki why there has been military like uh, role in pakistan and why it has been so much successful to iske pehle log support karte hain pakistani army dar dikha diye logon ko india ka ye to humne reason dekha hai lekin isme ek aur reason hai international community ka bhi like international community also like uh, somehow support like just take example of super power united states of america it somehow in some extent it supports the military the pakistani army uh, their rule na democracy setup ko aise badhne nahi dena chahte uske apne reasons hai jo aapko aage bata raha hai dekho kya keh raha hai there is a lack of genuine international support for democratic rule in pakistan it has further encouraged the military to continue its dominance so there has been a lack of international support uh, for democracy in pakistan why because the united states and other western countries have encouraged the military authoritarian rule in the past for their own reasons the united states of america ki baat kare ya many other western countries they for their own interest they have supported the pakistani military pakistani army and through that jo democratic setup hai usko fir obviously fall out to ho gaye hoga usko support nahi milta utna international support nahi milta na why iska kya reason hai sir the reason is very simple that uh, there is a fear of the threat of what they call global islamic terrorism and apprehension that pakistan's nuclear arsenal might fall into the hands of these terrorist groups the military regime jo hai pakistan mein has been seen as the protector of western interest in west asia and south asia so the reasons are very simple first of all the uh, jo word yahan pe use kiya gaya hai global islamic terrorism like western countries united states of america and other western countries think that if uh, like uh, pakistani military will like lose its power or domination then uh, uh, like islamic terrorism will also like prevail there and that's how it will be threat to the western interests hai na western interest ke bilkul threat honge so therefore they also support and the other reason is nuclear arsenal of pakistan Uh, they think that if uh, the uh, like uh, reign of uh, or the domination of army will lose then what will happen the nuclear arsenal can fall into the wrong hands so that's how the pakistani military is seen as a kind of protector of the western interest also in west asia and in south asia that's why international community also supports the pakistani army and pakistani army is just sailing through this and uh, many times we have seen the dictatorship there and currently also however there is democratic government but the real power lies in the hands of the pakistani army so you know so that's how we understand that uh, this is the concept of uh, pakistan and that's how the pakistani politics has played its role uh, since independence now dear students we have come to the next topic that is democracy in bangladesh now we're going to understand about uh, how the formation of bangladesh happened and uh, what about the democracy in bangladesh it has been successful or it has been also a failure as it happened in pakistan in bangladesh also so let us go through this topic so first of all bangladesh was part of uh, pakistan the current pakistan from 1947 till 1971 uh, earlier it was known as east pakistan and you know, so it was a very interesting partition that happened in uh, this region that uh, that what happened here you can see in this map also that this whole whole region india was in in between 
between the west pakistan and east pakistan here so uh, this kind of partition you know, divide and rule policy which was adopted by britishers earlier and in the time of 1947 also and uh, since partition we have been like uh, fighting with each other in and pakistan and the chaotic uh, things are going on here in this region so bangladesh was earlier known as east pakistan it was it mainly consisted of uh, the muslim majority area of uh, east bengal and uh, the part of assam so it, uh, it when it was partitioned the area the east bengal area and uh, area of assam where there was muslim majority so that came under east pakistan now what happened the people of this region resented the domination of western pakistan and imposition of the urdu language now it is very interesting that the partition happened east pakistan and west pakistan was made but the real power always lied in pakistan mainly in the hands of western pakistan you know west pakistan and uh, the islamabad always tried to dominate itself in east pakistan tried to impose its culture on the bengali culture so what happened actually before 1971 also uh, many things happened like uh, cultural exploitation also urdu was made as a kind of official language in uh, bangladesh na, which was earlier known as east pakistan and uh, the policies were adopted by the by western according to the western pakistan interests so that's why ultimately the partition happened the kind of a, kind of system happened where uh, bangladesh liberation war happened in 1971 ultimately bangladesh was made so what happened actually soon after the partition everyone in uh, bangladesh which was earlier east pakistan they began to protest against the unfair treatment meted out to the bengali culture and language you know urdu was like uh, imposed urdu was made as official language in uh, there in bangladesh and uh, it was adopted by the western pakistan as the official language national language so it was also imposed on the it was all, all, always given priority even in east pakistan where mainly bengali was spoken uh, spoken so it was given priority over bengali so it was a kind of uh, interference in the bengali culture also so therefore people started protesting since independence in east pakistan over the domination of the western pakistan culture now they also demanded fair representation in administration and fair share in political power also who the east pakistanis uh, there was a leader called sheikh muzib muzibur rahman who made a party called awami league jinhone awami league naam karke ek party banayi thi sheikh muzibur rahman uh, abhi jahan wahan pe pakistan uh, abhi sorry bangladesh mein jo wahan ki prime minister hai premier hai wo inhi ki beti hai uh, sheikh hasina sheikh muzibur rahman uh meet awami league he led very popular struggle against west west pakistani domination he demanded autonomy for the eastern region so he struggled for the bengali uh, interest and uh, mainly the western in western pakistan bengalis were there bengal for bengali language for bengali culture he just uh, stood against the west pakistani leadership now ultimate reason the instant reason what it was in 1970 elections in the pakistan happened and the awami league which was the party of uh, sheikh mujibur rahman led by sheikh muzib won all the seats in east pakistan very interesting all the seats in east pakistan were won by awami league led by sheikh mujibur rahman and even what happened it secured a majority in the proposed constituent assembly for the whole of pakistan very interesting that uh, there was a proposed um, single constituent assembly for east pakistan and west pakistan now in that constituent assembly awami league secured much of the seats like it was it came with majority but that was not acceptable to the west pakistan and west pakistani leadership so the government uh, was dominated by west pakistani leadership they refused to convene the assembly they said that uh, because it was even they also got shocked that uh, the awami league which is like which belong mainly belongs to east pakistan and it will be like uh, everything will be according to them 
so how come they they could accept this so what happened they did not accept it they refused they refused to even convene the assembly even sheikh mujib was arrested under the military rule of general yaya khan so under uh, general yaya khan uh, was the general of that uh, pakistan pakistani army he took over uh, sheikh mujibur rahman was arrested the pakistani army tried to suppress the mass movement of bengali people thousands of people bengali people mean they were they were killed by pakistani army now because being a big country in the south asian region being a neighboring country what happened and what about india sir what india did first of all india faced the migration crisis a lot of like uh, lakhs and even it is said that millions of people just moved to india so all of we faced that migration crisis so large scale migration happened to india uh, this creating a refugee problem in india okay so the government of india also supported the demand of the people of east pakistan for their independence ultimately openly the government of india at that time indira gandhi was our prime minister she supported the demand of the east pakistani people the demand of independence from west pakistani domination and uh, the support to bangladesh liberation war that's how it was all started now what happened next financially financially and militarily we started supporting the east to pakistani independence move ultimately what happened the war between india and pakistan happened in december 1971 so in december 1971 when it is started on 3rd of december 1971 when pakistani air force started bombing in some air force stations of india and it ended within 13 days in 16th of december 1971 when nearly 93000 of pakistani soldiers surrendered and uh, at that time pakistani commander was ak niyazi hai na ak niyazi pakistan ke commander the us situation mein east pakistan ke so general under general ak niyazi 93000 on 16th of december 1971 they all surrendered it was started on 3rd of december 1971 so in december 1971 the war between india and pakistan started and uh, it ended with the surrender of the pakistani forces and formation of bangladesh as an independent country so ultimately that's how the bangladesh was uh, like uh, the formation of bangladesh happened as an independent country here here you can see a moral in dhaka university to remember noor hussain who was killed by the police during here this is the pottery of noor hussain who was this happened afterwards when uh, what happened after the after the uh, independence of bangladesh after the formation of bangladesh was sir since 1971 there has been democracy no this did not happen in bangladesh because what happened in bangladesh dictatorship also came in bangladesh and a military ruler two times uh, kind of uh, took over in bangladesh also happened so bangladesh drafted its constitution later on in, after 1971 liberation war declaring faith in secularism democracy and socialism in 1975 sheikh mujib got the constitution amended ab hua kya dekho interesting sheikh mujibur rahman jo the 1975 mein unhone constitution ko amend kiya aur parliamentary form of democracy se jo hamare yahan pe adopted hai isme pura parliamentary form of democracy hai jisme hum representative elect karte hain wo apna ek leader prime minister elect karte hain that's how the whole system is after 1971 they also made their constitution in a parliamentary form of system was adopted there but sheikh mujib in 1971 75 he amended the constitution and he shifted from that parliamentary form of government to presidential form of government usme unhone amend kar diya constitution ko aur unhone kya kiya he abolished all parties except his own to ye kuch ek galat decision us time mein sheikh mujib aur sheikh mujib ki party dwara liye gaye 1975 mein कि उन्होंने कई पार्टीज सारी पार्टीज को एक तरीके से बैन कर दिया ओनली हिज पार्टी वाज अलाउड काइंड ऑफ वन पार्टी सिस्टम आवामी लीग जो उनकी पार्टी थी अब इससे हुआ क्या सर ऑब्वियसली इसके कॉन्ट्रास्टिंग इफेक्ट होंगे इंप्लीकेशंस होंगे इसकी वजह से कॉन्फ्लिक्ट्स और टेंशन हो गए वहां की सोसाइटी में ड्रामेटिक और ट्रेजिक डेवलपमेंट्स हुए अल्टीमेटली क्या हुआ ही वाज ओ शेख मुजीबुर रहमान वाज असैसिनेटेड उनको उनका एक तरीके से कत्ल कर दिया गया एंड मिलिट्री अपराइजिंग हैपन इन अगस्त 1975 मिलिट्री टू कोवर एंड न्यू मिलिट्री रूलर बने जियाउर रहमान 
जो मिलिट्री रूलर थे मिलिट्री जनरल थे उन्होंने अपनी एक पार्टी बनाई बकायदा बांग्लादेश नेशनल पार्टी जो आज भी एक इंपॉर्टेंट पार्टी है बांग्लादेश के अंदर वहां की मेन ओपोनेंट पार्टी है जो जियाउर रहमान ने बनाई थी बांग्लादेश नेशनल पार्टी नाउ नाउ लेटर ऑन व्हाट हैपन इन 1979 इलेक्शन हैपन सो द बांग्लादेश नेशनल पार्टी वन द इलेक्शन ही वाज आल्सो असेसिनेटेड हु जियाउर रहमान वाज आल्सो असेसिनेटेड एंड अनदर मिलिट्री टेक ओवर हैपन अंडर अंडर जनरल लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल एच एम अरशद under lieutenant general hm arshad this uh, another kind of military took over happen and the people of bangladesh bangladesh ab uske baad kya hua is in sab cheezon se log wahan ke fed up ho gaye and ultimately what happened bangladesh soon rose in support of the demand for democracy students ho ya alag alag area mein jo log ho common people they started protesting against the rule of hm arshad and uh, arshad was ultimately forced to allow political activity only limited scale ultimately jo hm arshad the jo military ruler the unko bhi democratic activities allow karni padi apne desh mein unhone apne aap ko as a elect he was later elected as the president for 5 years mass public protest started happening so ultimately he had to step down who hm arshad he had to step down in 1990 in 1991 election happened in bangladesh and since then There has been democracy in Bangladesh. तब से लेके आज तक democracy रही है Bangladesh में दो major party है वहां के एक तो BNP Bangladesh National Party और एक party है जो Awami League जो हमने भी बात की ठीक है खालिदा जिया जो की wife थी इनकी जिनको कत्ल किया गया था ना जिन्होंने party बनाई थी BNP Bangladesh National Party जिया उर रहमान उन्हीं की wife है जो अभी इस party को lead कर रही है Bangladesh National Party को जो main opponent party है Bangladesh की खालिदा जिया और जो वहां की लीडर है ठीक है शेख हसीना नाउ ऑल ऑफ यू दैट्स हाउ दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द पॉलिटिकल सेटअप व्हिच हैपन इन बांग्लादेश सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द बांग्लादेश एंड अबाउट द पाकिस्तान so that's how it is all about the uh, system which was adopted by bangladesh after 1971 we started with the liberation of bangladesh war and how the democracy has since 1991 has been like going on in a good manner in bangladesh but earlier after 1971 there was a kind of political turmoil in bangladesh also when uh, two times what happened the military leadership took over under jiaur rahman under lieutenant general hm arshad now here we were discussing about this pottery also so this is a kind of mural you know painting on wall and in dhaka, dhaka university what happened to remember noor hussain who was killed by the police during pro democracy protest which happened against general arshad in 1987 so ultimately general arshad had to step down and to allow he had to allow that uh, democratic framework in bangladesh and since then the democracy has been going on in a well manner so this is a portrait of a person who struggled who just got killed by the bullets of police for pro democracy protest so this is a kind of remembrance to that person now next next is another neighboring country of india and that is nepal monarchy and democracy in nepal so uh, there is a kind of uh, uh, like uh, monarchy there was monarchy in nepal and there has been struggle between monarchy and democratic like uh, supporters in nepal that's what we going to discuss in this topic so nepal was a hindu kingdom in the past and then a constitutional monarchy it became in the modern period for many years it uh, remained as constitutional monarchy throughout this period political parties and the common people of nepal have wanted a more open and responsive system of government but the king because it was earlier as uh, it remained as monarchy so the king with the help of the army retained the full control for a long period of time in uh, nepal and restricted the expansion of democracy in nepal ultimately what happened the steps or the events which happened 
and which paved the way for democracy in nepal so ultimately the king accepted the demand for a new democratic constitution in 1990 in the wake of a strong pro democracy movement supported by the nepalese people however the democratic governments had a short and troubled career during the 90s the maoist another ideological based people in nepal they were successful in spreading their influence in many parts of nepal they believed in the armed insurrection against the monarch and the ruling elite to dekho is pure topic mein nepal wale mein aapko bata rakha hai ki nepal pehle monarchy raha monarchy rehne ke baad mein jab democratic governments banne lagi is pure region mein to nepal ke andar bhi ultimately the king had to accept new democratic constitution in 1990 why because pro democracy movement happened in nepal there was another मूवमेंट मूवमेंट बाय माओविस्ट जो माओविस्ट जो कम्युनिटी ओनरशिप पे गवर्नमेंट कंट्रोल सिस्टम में बिलीव करते हैं तो माओविस्ट ने भी माओविस्ट का भी बहुत ज्यादा इन्फ्लुएंस होने लगा नाइन्टीज के बाद में अलग अलग रीजन में तो इसकी वजह से और उनका मानना था कि आर्म इंस्ट्रक्शन होना चाहिए ना आर्म अप्राइजिंग होनी चाहिए अगेंस्ट द किंग अगेंस्ट द लाइक आर्मी बिकॉज आर्मी वॉज ऑल्सो सपोर्टिंग द किंग सो दिस लेट टू अयलेंट कॉन्फ्लिक्ट बिटवीन द माओविस्ट गुरिलास एंड द आर्म फोर्सेज ऑफ द किंग so in 90s what happened a kind of violence between between the maoist guerrillas and and the uh, armed forces of king it happened in nepal so for some time there was a kind of triangular conflict to so, nepal ke andar ek triangular conflict hone laga jisme ek taraf maoist the ek taraf wo log the jo democracy democracy mein believe karte hain democratic liberals hai na democrats jisko aap keh rahe ho aur ek taraf raja monarchy so that's how a kind of triangle conflict happen in nepal the rest of the topic we going to discuss everyone in the next class uh, thank you everyone